We think we know a lot about Morty Eigen, but what do we really know? Let's dig a little deeper. Although little is known about his early childhood, our archivists have put together these rare and important photographs to explain how Martin Eigen went from an obscure child in Brooklyn to the legend we know today. Although much research has been done, many pressing questions remain. For example, why was he always seen wearing a tuxedo? In 1948, he began his career in an elementary school, getting the highest marks, satisfactory. He won a Fulbright scholarship into second grade. Although his teachers recognized that he was their best student, they still believed he could do better. At the age of 13, he was singled out for a bar mitzvah, a rare and high honor reserved only for the most successful of the Jewish tribe. He went on to master the clarinet. And after the first two years of study at Brooklyn Technical High School, he received almost honors grades in hygiene. Encouraged by his success, he went on to have a child pictured here. In this rare photograph, we see one of the only known images of him with his first wife, Carol. After graduate school, he was plucked by an international company and moved to Geneva, Switzerland. He was named the regional executive of Africa, Holland, Iceland, and Luxembourg. A position so powerful, his business card had no title. He was also the inspiration of one of America's most beloved characters. Bond. James Bond. In Geneva, he was given the state-of-the-art tools, a dictaphone, and an in-the-wall air conditioner. By the 1970s, Marty had grown weary of working for the man. Always an innovator, Marty spent much of his 30s experimenting with new types of facial hair. It was during this period that he invented the often copied mustache. But due to a slip-up at the patent office, he never became wealthy from it. Refusing to let himself get down, he formed his own jazz duo, the infamous Ron, Ron and Marty, portrayed here by Will Farrell in the film Anchorman. Do you play jazz flute? I dabble. Uh, uh, that's baby making music, that's what that is. Uh. The 60s and 70s were a time of great social change, and Marty was not one to be left behind. Although there are almost no photographs in existence from this time, we've hired professional actors to perform a scene that may have happened, representative of how Marty probably was in this period. Tell you something, Mr. Parker. No, let me tell you something, Mr. Stivic. You are a meathead. <laughs> and meathead, dead from the neck up. It was during this period of time that he married his second wife, Anne Brown, pictured here from one of those novelty photo booths where you pretend to be from the 70s. Years later, he attended the wedding of his second cousin, Anita. So struck was he by her beauty that he swore one day he would make her his own. As the result of his incredible persistence and the use of coercion in the form of a large polar bear, he was able to one day have his dream come true. As luck would have it, the third marriage was a charm. Well, you all know how the story goes from here. He lived happily ever after. He became wealthy, healthy, and wise. And one day was lucky enough to have all of the important people in his life come together to celebrate his birthday. Happy birthday, Marty Eigen, whoever you may truly be. Let's go!